How are you guys? How are you holding up? We're doing all right. Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously uncharted water, so yeah, you take things day by day, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's Pretty. It's been a wild ride, man. It's been, you know, when it first came out, I was like, ah, oh, no big deal, and then it just kept going and going and going and going, and now I'm just not sure when it's going to end. And that's really well, they, where we're they at. just extended the guidelines to the end of April. Yeah. What, what are your What are your thoughts on this thing? You think this is uh, this is going to take out all of May, June? What are you thinking? Uh, for events, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. What be, all of All of April is certainly already postponed. Right. We've had We've had a couple in May, a couple in June. I think um, yeah. late May might be a little too early to tell, and June might be a little too early to tell. But yeah. uh, I think we'll get a couple more in, in May for sure. Yeah, that's one of the questions we had. Somebody's uh, wedding is June 12th, and uh, it'll be my 34th that day. But they're, uh, they're even concerned. They're like, what do we do? So it's like it's hard because you don't really know where it's, where it's going and, and where people should start to, to move and figure things out. But, um, you know, people are looking for answers, and I'm not sure that anybody really has them right now. But that's kind of why we're trying to do this here to kind of help people out and figure it out. Um, yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, there's no clear cut answer because obviously we haven't gone through this before. So there's like, right. there's no blueprint to go by. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, and there's, exactly. and there's multiple sides to it too. So like, you know, you have the client side, you have the vendor side, and then there's like right. this whole community of like, uh, how do we all come together and just like pull through it? Yeah. It's funny. I was, uh, I chatted briefly today with, um, with Jeannie Cretella from Landmark and I won't disclose everything that we spoke about, but you know, for them, it, it's tough as, as venues trying to figure out how to facilitate all this, uh, be as professional and as kind as possible and, and make it all work. But they're coming together almost like a union, all the venues, because they want to all be on the same page. They don't really want to, fight each other on this. They all want to try and make their clients as happy as possible without sacrificing as well. So it's, um, it's a battle. And, and for DJs, it's, it's difficult too, because, and I would assume it's even harder for you guys with bands because, you know, if the band isn't available on the postponement date, like, what do you do? Yeah, luckily, I mean, we've, cause we don't have as many bands as we do DJs, you know? Right. So in the event like that, thankfully we've been able to save all of them. Uh, right. So like, and all the postponements, like where, especially on the band side, I think clients are a little bit more uh, inclined to uh, like consult with us first before like locking in a, a, a new date. Yes. With the venue. I, and I, I understand like if you have that date, you have to like pull the trigger right then and there because it's in front of you. Um, but yeah, we've we've been able to either at least like keep it the same or upgrade in terms of like because we have bands that are bigger or smaller, you know. Sure. Sure. So, um, if we're able to give you like more pieces for kind of like the same price, things like that. Right. Um, but we've been able to do it, but yeah, definitely a little harder on the, on the band side. Yeah. And how, how is your postponement, uh, you know, kind of what's, what's the literature like people able to just move and how, how have you been handling that? Yeah, we decided to keep it nice and simple. Um, because I think that's like probably the number one concern we've gotten. It's like, Oh, well, if I have to move my date, what happens to my money? You know? Right. Um, so we just decided to make it nice and simple and, uh, just apply to any payments that we received up until this point to right. the new date. Like no questions yeah. asked. You don't have any, you don't have any like postponement fees or reschedule fees or anything like that. Right. Um, Same here. yeah. So it's just make it nice and streamlined. Yeah. I guess that's that what you guys have been doing too. Yeah. Same thing. I think, you know, one of the, it's, it's like I was saying before, what's so difficult is, is you're running a business versus being, you know, kind and having a heart. But one of the things that, you know, speaking to a lot of people in the business is what's difficult is that people are taking 2021 dates that you could potentially book yourself. So now those are dates that are now being filled and now you don't have the chance for new business. And that's part of what the venues are getting in trouble with. I wouldn't say getting in trouble with, but what they're having a tough time with is getting yeah. married this April and saying, okay, the next available date's next May. That's difficult to put all that money a year later and then lose that date as potentially reselling it to a new client. So, and yet at the same time, they realized that nobody wanted this to happen. 
So everybody's caught in the middle of this, this two, this, you know, this two sided sword, so to speak of like, you know, which way do you go for us? It's a little bit easier, I think. Um, but for other people, it's hard. And now I don't know where it goes into May and if it continues into June. And I think that's the part struggling with as well is for us, obviously, this is how we, we feed our family. This is how we pay our bills. If everybody in, in all of May and all of June move and then the middle of May, everything comes out and everybody's going back to their, their life, we might be sitting home again for another six weeks with nothing to do. Yeah, I know it's hard because a lot of like, just speaking candidly, a lot of our income is like when we perform right of course yeah it's the it's the good old gig economy um yeah yeah so it's just it's just it's a struggle i mean i know i'm on yeah. that front we're all hoping that it ends sooner than later so that you yeah. know we're not stuck getting off to back off to the races at like until Ju july or something you know right of course uh how have your meetings been have you guys been doing a lot of virtual meetings people still reaching out we we have been yeah um thankfully the the leads are still you know the new inquiries are are still pretty steady um right. and i i there's probably a couple of reasons for that which is which is good <clears throat> um but yeah it's obviously all switched over to virtual yeah whether zoom skype or google hangout which is which right. is not bad i mean over a phone call i kind of like it because you could do like screen sharing and you could still yep. share some, like promo material and yep. as opposed to what you could do on the phone. So, yeah. And, and it's, and it's funny and speaking with Jeannie earlier, you know, one of the things that she mentioned is the silver lining in all this is they're doing a lot of virtual tours and people are in, yeah. enjoying seeing the, the venue and realizing that they don't necessarily have to be there in person. You know, if you could do a FaceTime with a client, especially in today's day and age, if they can go on our website, go on our Instagram, see us perform, read reviews, then you could spend 20 minutes, half hour answering some of their questions, going over the quote. You don't necessarily have to be in person. So I think it's opening up everybody's idea of, of doing things online and doing things virtually and not necessarily having to be there face to face. Not that it's a bad thing to, to come hang out and chill. I mean, who wouldn't want to see these two pretty faces, right? But yeah. um, I think that, that, that there might be something good that comes out of this. And that might be one of those things. But uh yeah, so I mean, the virtual thing, I mean, think, I think that's going to be really helpful for us moving forward is people not realizing that they have to necessarily come to the office for everything. Yeah, which is good. And I, I also hope it, um, it's obviously a terrible scenario, but I think it's going to teach people to be a little bit more simple too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So. You know, I, yeah. I, saw, I talked about this on the one of our podcast episodes the other day. We recorded it. We didn't release it yet. Um. But speaking of the, the virtual tour thing, have you ever seen that website, 360sitevisit.com? Yes, yes. So I've done like a couple of weddings where they're actually like shooting the room as I'm yes. setting it. Yep. It's a, it's a pretty neat feature. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's really cool. And I'm sure the venues can do it like a personal tour. Like if you're a new client and you want to tour the venue, you can still hook up with a, a salesperson via FaceTime or, or, or Skype or whatever. And they're probably taking you around the venue and showing you like, Exactly. Your, your couch, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's actually pushing us forward in a weird way. And how about you guys with meeting? Uh, yeah, meeting thank God. It's been people. good. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, if people are looking to get married and they're planning, there's no better time to plan. There's no real excuses to be like, well, you know, I had work and my fiance got home late and, you know, we didn't have time to do our research. I mean, everybody, most people are sitting home. So, they have more than enough time to, to put things together. Obviously, there's the maybe the little bit of the hesitation to spend, but most people are okay. And, uh, you know, as long as this doesn't last, you know, six months, I think people will be all right. And that's, and that's one of the benefits of working with companies like ourselves is you're working with a bigger company. You don't have to fear is not going to be there when this all turns around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have you have the team resource, which is, which is nice. Right. You have like a, a how's, how, yeah. How's the working from home doing? Or are you guys still trying to go in? No, we've been working from it. This is going to be like our third full week at home yeah. uh, this upcoming week. So um, we're, we're pretty much good. We have, uh, I have like my printer. I got my laptop. I got my, my screen. I brought my, my second screen. That was like the move of the century right there. I needed yeah. my, my second monitor. Um, it's, you know, there's still some paperwork that I wish I would have the office for to like 
file away yeah. and keep things organized, but um, yeah. it's pretty good. I have like a little mini studio set up over here, so it's been all right. That's awesome. How about you've been working from home too? Same thing, you know, got the thing set up in the living room right here in front of me. Just, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard. There's, you know, it's, we're so used to being active people, being out about and working and, and, you know, that's the thing that like, I'll get on these virtual meetings with clients and like, oh, it must be tough for you guys. I said, yeah, it's tough in, in the sense that, you know, we're having to deal with this with people and we, and we feel terrible. But I, since I was 14, 13, 14 years old, I've been DJing in some capacity, going to events on the weekend. Yeah. You know, I was, I've been with my wife since we're 16. She doesn't know what it's like to have me home on a Saturday night. And now it's been constant. So yeah. for me, it's like a struggle to even, you know, know what my, this is a new reality for me, something that I'm not really used to. So I don't know how the, how you guys have been taking that. Well, my wife and I are a double whammy because she's she's in one of our bands for everybody that's, right. that's listening. Uh, so my wife's in the business too. So she's a, she's a performer and like we're both out on the weekends, you know. Right. Um, so being home on set, I mean, look, it's a nice change of pace. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm you know, there's there's always a plus out of something. I got to spend more time with her and right and everything. But um, I said to her this just this past weekend, I like stopped in my tracks. I was in my kitchen. I'm like. I think it was Saturday night. I'm like, what do people do on the weekend? Like, I'm I don't yeah, right. What do, yeah. what do I do with myself? Oh. Right. Yeah, you but, don't really know what to do to be home on a Saturday. Hey, Devin. There's my girl from the Chateau. We love hey, Devin. You know? Hey, Devin. Um, they might, they gotta be, you know, I, I can't even imagine as, as a venue, because obviously the amount of work that, that they do versus us and what they have on the books is is just insane. So I can't even imagine the, the phone calls and the emails that they're dealing with on a daily basis. Um, but um, yeah, I guess the, the silver lining is that we're, we're, we're able to slow down a little bit, take it all in and enjoy some of the weekends off. But I mean, what do you think the future of the business is like? You think this is gonna put a wrinkle in 2021? You think this is gonna help? Like, what do you think? Um, well, at least for a short amount of time, there's definitely gonna be a lot more weekday work to right. go around because the venues only have so many Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays that they can offer. Correct. Uh, which I see, I don't know if you guys have seen, but yeah. we've, we've had a few movements to Mondays and Thursdays. Yes. yes, Monday, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Yeah, so I mean, at least for the time being, I'd say within like the next 12 months, we should, we can expect that. Um, right. Which, you know, it, it stinks that you have to postpone like your happiest day of your life. But yeah. I know when that day does come around, everybody that's going to be in the room with you celebrating with you is right. is going to remember this and yes. probably be more, e even more excited to celebrate yeah. with you because they know right. you put it up. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for like the energy in the room that that's going to be there when we do get back. Correct. Uh, and, and a lot of Correct. stuff. Well, my, my hope, my hope is, is that if, if the clients in the end of May keep their wedding and things roll around, that it's going to be okay in the end of May, early June, you know, my fear is, is like, how are people going to respond? Because this is going to be new to them, you know, and it's, are they going to be, you know, like, who's not going to show up because they're still nervous to be in big groups? How do you think the crowds and the people are going to react when, if the end of May and June do come about? Yeah, there's probably going to be a, uh, a, a lower guest list size for some people. But, right. you know, I... I always say the people that are going to be in the room are there and excited to celebrate with you. So, you know, focus yes. on the people that are there, not the people yes. that show up. Yeah. Like somebody said, there will be some, some social awkwardness. I think for sure yeah, they'll definitely, there will be. Uh, but you're right also, because I did tell clients the same thing. I'm like, people are going to be excited to party with you. They're like, oh, you know, we're going from a Friday to a Wednesday or, or a Monday. Listen, it's, it is what it is. People will be excited. You know, I, there's this whole thing has taught me something. I, I, you know, anybody that just checked in, we talked about it briefly earlier, but um, <clears throat> there's there's three sides to this, at least the way that I see it. There's there's the client side, obviously. There's the vendor side because there's a there's a lot of advice we could probably be going back and forth on like how vendors should be handling this whole thing. And then there's like the therapy side, right? I mean, I've had clients reach out to me that already postponed we already said and they had just had to talk through a couple things you know yeah um, so it's like in part where like business owners 
DJs and performers and, and therapists, you know? Yeah. So you have to be really good at empathizing with the situation that your clients are in because it, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, it, it sucks. It's, I mean, no, it's, out, it, it, it's out of your control and it's just, it's something that you wanna be able to control, but we, we just put our best foot forward and have to, have to empathize with the situation. So we got any questions from the crowds here? What do we got? Mike wanted to know about the hair. Well, uh, I yeah, had a client hurt. earlier ask about June. Um, not really. I haven't seen anything yet. Um, but yeah. So what else? What else is on your mind? What is? What have you guys been processing and talking about most? If you're doing like you know, conference calls and stuff with the with your employees and things like well it's it's become a new question for the the prospective clients now too obviously they right. want to know if we have any policies in place right uh for you know god forbid something else like this comes up it, you know they're right. saying it, it may come back in the fall who knows um so to be able to answer that question concisely and transparently and and, right. and all that stuff has, has helped for sure and uh they just you know that that's another big takeaway from this, especially on the vendor side, um, having a policy in place and like a, a, a concrete policy in place and being confident in it and knowing that uh, it protects your clients has, has definitely helped us a little bit. Right. Um, so whatever that, whatever that pol or those policies are, make sure you stick to them and, and they're in yeah. the best interest of everybody involved. Yeah. Yeah, that was the funny thing. And that was one of the things that I was talking to Jeannie about. I'm like, I don't think anybody obviously didn't foresee this coming. So you didn't even know what your postponement clause should be. You know, it, you would think, right. oh, if you want to, you know, you, you very even rarely have postponements. Um, they are rare unless there's, you know, a serious event like a hurricane or a, yeah. you know, a blizzard comes through. But even so, over the past few years, we've been kind of lucky with that. So you know, mm -hmm. maybe once a year you get a postponement, you'll get a cancellation, some some weird stuff like that, but nothing to this level. So, you know, we've had to modify it a little bit, but it's it's still the same thing. Like if you have to postpone your event, you have to postpone your event. So you really can't hold it against people, especially if something like this takes place again, which I don't know if this is going to become our new reality or not. Um, but it's definitely wild, man. I, I could never imagine this in my wildest dreams is you know somebody delivers something and i gotta stand you know six feet away from them and then i gotta lysol the box and wash my hands like this yeah. guy didn't drop off a bola to my house you know what i mean he, he, uh, it's assaulted mozzarella you know <laughs> my like, my hands are so raw from, from washing all i do is wash my hands I, I i'm waiting for people to tell me when to shower all i've been doing is washing my hands <laughs> oh my god yeah Nuts. What are what are some of the have you have you guys had any like hiccups or like single cases that you've had to uh, have like not special treatment that's that's the wrong word to as use as far as like, what a client is concerned yeah 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 you know the the I think the problem is 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 if in the event somebody wants to cancel you know that's where we could see an issue and that's what the venues don't want either is is that's where it's becomes tricky is you have like a saturday night book for 200 people and you want to go to a 40 person dinner you know how do you handle that situation because the contract's really not going to allow you to do that you know you kind of held to the services that you have and the amount that you're looking to spend but at the same time you want to have a heart so you know we, we haven't really run into anything yet i think one client looked to to cancel their event altogether but 99.9 .9 are postponing because people want to get married it's different our corporate the corporate side is going to get hammered and they're all canceling because you know whatever they don't have to do the new reveal of so and so you know we we're supposed to do an event for porsche the new tie can uh came out take can or whatever it's called toucan <laughs> the electric porsche a, uh, that was supposed to be last week, and uh, and they canceled, of course. And you would expect that. It's a corporate event, not a big deal. But a monumental moment like a wedding is something that people don't just want to say, well, forget it. We're not going to do it. They do want to move it. So yeah. then it's about making sure you're available and all the services you have are available. Because for us, it's not just music, right? So we have video. We have photography. Uh, all the different services that we offer, we're you know, having to look at everything. Now, luckily, people are picking dates that aren't. You know, that if you can't move it to a Saturday in October. Um, right. So, 
but there hasn't been anything where it's been out of sorts or anybody's been, you know, up in arms. We're trying to just handle it. Um, what are you guys thinking about July weddings? July again, I, I just think this is a week by week thing at this point. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be moving. Here's what I'll say about all this. If I'm getting married in May, I'm probably moving my wedding, especially the first three weeks of May. Maybe yeah. if I'm the end of May, I would keep it just to see where we're at. Yeah. June, I wouldn't be moving right now. I would wait to kind of see where things play out because, it, 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 you know, but then the problem becomes if you wait too long, you might lose on potential dates that you could have had. So it's a conundrum. It's, it's, a, it's a very sticky thing because if you are getting married in the beginning of June, you're like, I really don't think this thing is going to be over, but it might be, you know, you don't want it. Every, like I said before, you don't want it to break in the middle of May and everybody goes back to normal and you're like, crap, I could have had my wedding in two weeks, but now I waited another eight months, but everything is fine. But yet you wait until the middle of May to reschedule because now you realize June's crap and they're like, well, we don't have anything for you until, you know, a Monday in February or something wild that now you're like, crap, I waited too long. But July, I definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't be touching July. I wouldn't even think about it. I think you're in the clear. Then again, what do I know? You know? Yeah, at, at this point, um, I agree. I agree. I, I wouldn't move it quite yet. Um, for anybody that's like late May and forward, I would do like a, like anywhere from like a four to five week rolling um, analysis. You know, if you're yeah. like 30 days out, you get to yeah. a 30 day mark where, you know, it's still iffy, then move it, you know, yeah. if you're still unsure. Um, but I, I wouldn't do anything too far inside of that. Just, yeah. just because, you know, it, you're going to have to uproot all the things that you've already planned for. I mean, you may have to do that anyway. Yes. Um, but it, there's no reason to do that if you don't have to. And right. there's no, there's no, there's no panic button at this point, especially for right. July specifically. There isn't, there isn't. It's just that, that bounce back period that I'm just, because now the social distancing obviously, obviously is April 30th, right? But the CDC says no gatherings up until May 15th, May 16th, whatever that, that date is. If they're key, are they going to, are they going to push that back? And then if they do, is there a week or two after that where things are still awkward and people are starting to get back into things? Mm -hmm. um, here's know. what I, I, w I would do I mean that's just my personal opinion like that 30 day rolling thing but um, definitely if you're still concerned about it now just talk to your venue first and make sure right. that you know what their policies are in place and just kind of like dabble with your vendor team just to see like how easily it would be movable and right. what are possibly some uh, postponed dates that the venue can offer you Correct. And even at this point, if you are in July specifically, I'm, I'm just using that as an example because yeah. that's the question we got. Um, they may not even be able to offer you that yet because they're just walk, they're working down Correct. the line first. Correct. So they got to take right. care of their May and June dates first before they yes. get to July. So, Yes, that's what I've heard as well. And that was one of the things that Jeannie mentioned too, is that they're kind of sticking to the CDC guideline and they're taking it week by week. And then they'll kind of see where things are at when, you know, that rolls around. So... Just I so, can't imagine so, being on the venue side, man. The venue side has got to be no, tough. You know, another thing that we touched on last week is somebody was asking about, uh, you know, do they send out new invitations, new new cards? I would just do a change the date card. Um, I wouldn't be sending out new invitations and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's it's hard, especially if you're if you're getting product from overseas and you know whatever it might be, that could be that could be difficult. But I really don't know how to answer any of this stuff be honest with you it'd be really tough for me to be in this situation any any special cases on your end anything come up that you're like wow that's i didn't think of that um thankfully not yet yeah not yet we've had uh i think we've had one client that just um we ended up refunding them because <clears throat> they just weren't able to find a new date um they'll they still want to work with us down the line they just don't know when that's going to be so other than that i mean we've had to um everyone's been postponing and it's been all similar cases so yeah um yeah yeah it's just it's it's weird because like i said i mean we we've never had to handle 
this before. So it's a, it's a lot of gray area. Um, I do think, you know, just going back to my earlier point and having a policy in, in place and, and sticking to it and, and knowing that it's in the best interest of everybody involved um, has, has certainly given our, our clients a ton of comfort you know, when they reach out, be like, "What's ha what happens?" Oh, well, here, this is everything that happens. They're like, "Oh, good, okay, wow, that's that's awesome." Yeah, you know. Yep, I hear you. Yeah, we're trying to stay as, as busy as possible. I've been doing some live mixing. I know people have been enjoyed that um, with some of our guys every week. And uh, how about you? Are you doing anything live? You like trying to get? Anybody yeah. Doing if any, anyone any wants to rock, if anyone wants to rock out tonight, I'm actually going to do a late night mix after this i'm gonna go on into my basement and just like freestyle <laughs> i don't even know what i'm gonna play i don't know what i'm gonna do but i'm just gonna like throw down some beats if you guys want to join me yeah um, I, listen I'll, I'll i'll watch i got nothing going on somebody yeah. said here what about people out of work and you're sending a wedding invitation they may not have money for a gift then the couple loses out what about people out of work <laughs> you're sending a wedding. What, like if you send an invite to somebody who's out of work yeah. Ooh, that, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Well, I mean, um, you, you, I mean, what? I, I mean, do you do you start polling your? You know, do you put an Instagram poll out like, you know, hey, are you yeah, because I might not send you an invite if you can't. Yeah, you know, no, do here's that the either. Thing. Uh, e even though it might not be on your wedding day specifically, when they get back up on their feet. I would anticipate that they'll send you something, whether it be in the mail or, yeah, you know, if yeah. if it's something that they can't afford to do on the day of the wedding, um, maybe just expect it at a later yeah. date. I mean, listen, when it comes to your immediate family and your closest of closest friends, you can't determine on whether you're going to invite them based on their employment, right? So if 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 the person's on your your B list, then you have you know 250 people, and you might not invite you know, so-and-so because you think they might not be giving you a gift. So be it, but um, no, you change the date. What about people? You know, you, you say, Pat's saying change the date so that you know everybody hasn't lost out. So instead of keeping something at the end of May, that might be tough for somebody to to bring a gift. If you're changing the date, you know, everybody will be back on their feet. But then, but then you're doing it for, for different reasons. You're doing it for, for your guests instead of what's, what works for you. You know, you have to kind of, oh, that's tough. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm understanding properly. Pat, are you, are you suggesting that you change the date? Uh, to ensure that everybody's back on their feet, I guess. Yeah. So, so saying, I'll give you an example. If we're, if we're good by June 1st, right. And your wedding is on June. Right. 5th. Uh, 10th. And people have been out of work. Okay. That's a good point. So people have been yeah. out of work, <clears throat> March, April, May, and your wedding's June 5th. Now they're just getting back into it. They're just starting to get their paycheck. They're just starting to gain. Yeah, so their... even though, and even though you'd be good with that date, you're still saying to, to change it. Is that what you're suggesting? <clears throat> right. So it's, I don't even think Pat's thing might be, yes, they might not be able to give a gift, but they also might not be able to give the right gift. So let's say I'm going to a wedding with my wife. I might normally give you 400 bucks. Yeah. But now I've been out of work for three months. I'm still coming to your wedding, but I might not be only give you, give you 200 bucks. You know, and, yeah. and, and you'll, you'll know my situation, but now you're losing out on that. So if that happens to 20 couples, at two hundred dollars a clip, one hundred and fifty dollars a clip, then the couple is saying to themselves, "Now I'm losing all this extra wedding profit or money." Um, yeah, that's that's true. I mean, if um, if we here here's my thing. Well, I'm I just I had a big wedding, so maybe this is just more uh, just more of my personal experience. But you you don't really make the money back in the cards anyway no. based on what you spent on the wedding. So like if you're looking to just make all your money back, I I'd, I'd probably caution you to temper your expectations. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's I don't think anybody yeah, I, I'd hope to not think that somebody's thinking they're getting everything back. But but I see that I do see that side of it. If you're having a party 
just outside of this entire period. And you know people have been struggling and then they're expected to go to a celebration and, and give a gift. That might be a difficult time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to make it easier on, on your guests, you can, you can change it. I'm, I'm all right. for that. If you're thinking right. you're making it easier on your guests, then yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's wild, too, that this has come, you know, during wedding season where there's going to be a crap ton of May and June weddings that people are going to lose out on. You know, it's one thing, and it's, it's no offense, but obviously it happens in, you know, January, February, March. It, it, even so, the knot says, you know, only 2% of weddings happen in January, February. But now May and June, that's heavy wedding season. So, you know, having to reschedule all those, like even from a venue's perspective or a vendor's perspective, rescheduling January, February, March weddings, not as difficult as when you start to get into May. And not all of May is, has done that yet. So we're right. still we're still working on half of May still you know in the on the books even early May, which is I vote I found a little weird because with the CDC's recommendation I'm not really sure how I'm actually going to look at May now. Um, like May first, May 9th, two on the fourteenth, four on the fifteenth, three on the sixteenth, you know, and that's that's inside the CDC's timeline. So. I don't really know where what these people are, are going to do. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think it can only move back, right? Yeah, of course. I, I don't I don't think they're going to. Right. I don't think they're going to move that date up. So um, if you're inside of the first two weeks of May, I would I would definitely be thinking about moving it. Right. And now what about like what about like lower? And I know some venues are some are and I can't even speak to that, but even lowering your head count. Like what if, you know, what if you're, you know, you had a guarantee of 200 people and now you think I'm only going to get 150 people are canceling on me because, you know, now it's the end of May. We're just kind of getting right back into things. And I don't think, you know, 50 people are going to come. They're nervous to even go outside at this point. Um, you know, then who's going to work with them. I mean, we can't answer that obviously. And I wouldn't know what to do in my own situation, but I mean, that's rough. Yeah. Um, Those are other things people have to think about. All this is kind of. Yeah. What makes it hard for us to answer like every question in the book is that we're only one sector of it, you right. know, being on the music side. I mean, I know what our policy is and how we would handle right. it and be able to make it, you know, a, a transition nice and easy for you. But um, has anybody in here had to postpone their, their wedding? Any, anybody? Can you can you shoot us a comment and just let us know like what your experience has been with? Yeah, last Megan? week we did um, a live at this time too, and we had uh, we had a couple on with us that had to move their wedding. They were in the middle of May, and they moved to they moved to next to April, I think, or August. No, I'm sorry, August. And uh, and and they said it it sucked. It wasn't what they want to do, but they really had no choice. I think as an entertainment company, we should use a gauge of 30 days out. If we haven't heard from a client that is booked, we should be proactive and reach out to them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we've been we've been kind of using that. I'm kind of using that. Did you yeah. like ro rolling week? All right, what what week are we on now? Right, and where do we stand? And that's and that's the thing is like the social distancing went from you know, the April 13th to the 30th. And then you, you listen to this stuff and you read it and it, you know, some people predict in, way into the summer, but I don't, I can't see us. I mean, I'll go crazy. And I know a lot of people will just like lose their shit if they got to stay inside all summer. Um, yeah, I, know. I just think people will, you know, just have to explode anyway at some point. You know, I, I just, I want to really get perspective from other people, but I think that we're all on the same page and we all just have to take it week by week and kind of go from there. That's really the end. Of, that's really the, the, the deal. Yeah. At the end of the day, if your vendors haven't reached out to you um, specifically uh, for, you know, and that may be for a couple of reasons, not because they're not being proactive about certain things. Um, and you're just interested in, knowing what the policy is or how things are moving about and how, you know, your vendor team is handling things. Right. Um, just reach out, shoot an email. To, I mean, we're, we're here, we're all working. Yeah. Or at least we are. Uh, and we're, we're like, 
happy and ready to field phone calls and questions. So same here. All right, Tom. Thank you very much. All right, dude. I'll talk to you Be soon. Be safe. All right. Ciao. Bye.